On February 4th of 2023, a spy balloon was shot down by the U.S. military. That splash one, that is a big kill. And they seem to be part of a wider surveillance program that covers several continents. Now, at first, it might seem sort of laughable that balloon surveillance could actually be a real threat. People were worried they were being spied on. By me? A balloon? But the more that I thought about the direction that artificial intelligence is going, when you apply these new techniques to old ideas, it can be surprisingly effective. For example, I've seen new artificial intelligence techniques that can take very grainy, old, and pixelated images and upscale them until they're very crisp and show many details. I've seen technology that is old, like Wi-Fi routers, used in a new way. In one case, artificial intelligence was actually applied to measuring how the Wi-Fi signals bounced around a room, and it could measure tiny, minute patterns in the way that they change as they go through the human body, giving an actual map of where people are inside of a building just based on looking at the Wi-Fi signaling that anybody can get to. But probably most important is the myriad of ways that when you have these kind of informational sources, you can use it for decision making. These balloons are all about collecting the information you need so that you can make a strategic decision by a computer in the future for various reasons. And even data that doesn't seem actionable or like it could be a signal like encrypted data, maybe one day future artificial intelligence can actually crack that and then when that data is accessible, it can be used to train systems and get a better understanding of the history of what the United States has been up to. And most important, let's start to get our head around just how different nation states and politics and war is going to be in the future when artificial intelligence is everywhere. So starting on January 28th, up until February 4th of 2023, a high altitude balloon started traveling throughout the North American airspace. After it was debated in the news for a few days, the decision was finally made to shoot it down off the coast of South Carolina. This extraordinary image shows the payload of solar panels and spy equipment actually falling from the sky. Now what was possible to recover of this debris has been collected and sent to the FBI laboratory in Virginia to be studied. Now the day since it was originally detected, the government did have a U-2 reconnaissance airplane studying it. The US government declassified that information along with some other sources and found that there was hardware on board that was meant to intercept signals. The US said that the balloon was capable of locating electronic communication devices, and that includes mobile phones and radios. It also carried antennas that were clearly meant for intelligence surveillance. Now, five days later, the government also declassified more information showing that this is part of a fleet of balloons and that at least five have traveled over the United States since 2017. But let's take a second just to look at how big this thing actually was. So under this balloon is this huge piece of metal and it's as big as two school buses. It's mostly full of big solar arrays, but then it's got the technology right in the middle. Now the balloon's diameter is sizably larger than 200 feet. Look at it in comparison to the Statue of Liberty. That's incredible. Now it does seem like it had some ability to steer. The National Security Council spokesman said that the craft had a propeller and could be maneuvered, and the US officials told foreign diplomats in Beijing that the craft had rudders and propellers on board. Also, a US State Department document said that the balloon's solar array produced sufficient power to run multiple active intelligence collection sensors. The document goes on to say that the antennas on the balloon could collect and geolocate communications, including radio and mobile phone signals. So in a second, I'm going to talk about a few ways that I see this kind of coming together in the future. But first, if you want to take a second to smash that subscribe button, I would really appreciate it. I'm really trying to get this channel just growing to the point where I can like make a sustainable living so I can do this full time. So please hit subscribe. That would help me out a lot. Now back to the video. Not to mention these kind of military balloons can hold pretty heavy payloads and also go to extremely high altitudes, well above where a normal plane would be flying, but still below orbit. And when you're up there, devices can communicate over great distances, meaning there can be quite a bit of space between these things also. By incorporating AI into these balloons, military forces can analyze large amounts of data from a single location, increasing the speed and accuracy of their surveillance efforts. Now it's funny because Google actually had some experiments with balloons in the past, it was called Project Loon. Now the project began as an experiment in 2011, what Google calls a moonshot. And it's actually been tested in various countries, such as Australia, Brazil, Indonesia, and Sri Lanka. Now the idea behind Project Loon is kind of similar. It's to put balloons up in the air and provide internet access to really rural parts of the world. 
So they've actually been experimenting with these very high altitude balloons that just can hover pretty much all day long. And they have the equipment on board to provide internet access to broad swaths of people on the land below. So producing balloons is just simply cheaper, right? It's expensive to get anything into orbit. Once it's up there, it's hard to repair and maneuver. Having tens of thousands of these kind of balloons is probably the same price as getting just a handful of satellites up and running. Let's start by talking about cost because balloons are relatively inexpensive to produce and maintain, and they can be deployed in large numbers pretty quickly. Also, the cost of chips that can actually do tensor mathematics, they're becoming cheaper and cheaper, so it wouldn't be incredibly expensive to run an AI system on board one of these things. Don't forget that to train one of these huge large language models like we have for ChatGPT, that does cost billions of dollars, but when you have the final product, you can quickly implement it on smaller hardware. Training a system is expensive, but implementing it, not so much. You can just put that money into this low cost equipment and then just boom, throw it out at scale. Let the devices talk to each other. And when they do, you might get kind of an emergent property, something that we would call a mesh network. And my final point would be that once you have something like that, even if it's minimal, you have the ability to do a lot with tracking. Now the balloons are equipped with wireless communication technology that can actually transmit signals all the way from the ground up and down to the balloon. There'd still be other ways for the communication to continue. It could be either broadcasting between satellites and ships that are out in the ocean, places on the ground, or other types of flying devices like drones that are going at faster speeds. They can all communicate with each other, creating basically this little internet that exists everywhere between space and the ground. Now if you let AI analyze the kind of signals that they're seeing between each other, you can start to identify to the AI what's a human manned aircraft, what's a manless drone, what are all sorts of other flying things like birds and airplanes that aren't threats, and then treat it as an AI system that you've taught and let it help you identify those things instantaneous in the future. Probably also use that information to autonomously make some decisions or at least present decisions to humans. Hopefully the dangerous ones go to humans. And with this kind of automation just comes scale. You need less military people to observe all of these satellite communications, all of this data that's coming in, all of these photos, because artificial intelligence can sift through all of that. And for a person that says, this is a target that I want tracked, the computer system can do all of that for you. So in conclusion, the use of new artificial intelligence techniques on top of lots of old hardware could absolutely transform the way that some of these older technologies are viewed. All aspects of surveillance seem like they could be improved with the right training data. Increasing coverage, improving efficiency, increasing accuracy, and reducing costs. And that combination of all those things together, that's where you get what you would call an emergence. The emergence of something that's bigger than the sum of its parts. And that could be really valuable from a strategic military point of view. So if you enjoy this content and like learning about the way that AI is going to affect our future, hit that subscribe button below. And if you're still here and interested in this channel, we have a lot more cool content all related to technology and AI. And YouTube is probably recommending a YouTube video to you right here. So if you want to do me a solid, why don't you click on that, stay on my channel for a little bit, and I will see you guys in the next video.